Well, welcome back guys. Today, I've got a very special video for you. An end of the year video. This is gonna be my last video for this year, 2020. And before I get started, I just want to remember this one moment that we saw in May. I will never, 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 never forget this moment. We saw WTI crude oil trading at negative $37 a barrel. This is the future prices, the spot price for the June future, I believe. But it was just incredible. I've never seen something this bad in my life. So this is one moment I really remember in this year and is really, really special to me, at least in my memory. So what are we going to be doing in this video i'm going to be giving my top pick for 2021 i know this year has been pretty pretty bad for a lot of people this whole coronavirus from china that came back in january was pretty terrible i mean i had a school lockdown as well so i didn't have to go to school i know a lot of parents and people lost their jobs i'm sure they must have got some sort of unemployment benefits hopefully but it was a pretty sad moment and the year was having a tough time until we saw the pfizer BioNTech vaccine come out back in uh, the start of November, which really boosted our stock prices, right? We saw the Dow climb at least 2,000 points in a matter of uh, two weeks. So this really helped uh, the, the stocks in a way. And some of these stocks are still undervalued, in my opinion, that have a great price to run uh, next year and it's one of those sector like it's not just one stock I want to be talking about it's it's like the whole sector so this stock is like my one of my favorite stocks and I've been making a lot of videos about this stock you guys can check this out uh, in my channel my previous history so this stock is none other than Occidental Petroleum so why is it Occidental Petroleum is it an attractive price what's the type of debt this company has the market capitalization which big owners of this company hold Occidental Petroleum and why do I think this is a great stock going into 2021 so without further to do let's get started if you guys are new to this channel make sure to subscribe to my channel um and give me a like button for you know because the youtube algorithm will will pay me money or something like that i know other youtubers say that but um yeah just subscribe to the channel like the video and if you guys have any questions let me know in the comment section below so let's get right into the video <laughs> Well, to start off, guys, we're going to be looking at the third quarter earnings conference call of Occidental Petroleum. Here I've loaded up the slides that they presented for their third quarter. These slides give some insight to what they actually are doing in the third quarter and their guidance for the fourth quarter and how they're managing debt. So if you guys don't already know, um, Occidental Petroleum has quite a lot of debt and that has been reflected in the stock price over the past one year. So if, you, if, you, if you're new to the company, they acquired Anardco Petroleum right around 2019 and they're first trading for $83, but they took the $40 billion in debt. So now they've gone down to around $10 in back in March and then they recovered to $25, $20 and then they came back to $10 as the whole oil market came down. So now with the vaccine being announced, they did climb around 128% like around in two weeks, which was pretty, pretty impressive. But now you can kind of see that Occidental Petroleum is again consolidating right around the 17, 18 region. Um, so this is a pretty risky point to enter. I mean, if something bad happens with oil, the prices of Occidental Petroleum could go down. And mind you, this is one of those companies that I think is a high risk and a high reward. But I do, th I'm pretty bullish on the oil prices for next year. But if the oil prices don't go my way, this company is in risk of going bankrupt. So that's just my warning. So if you want to invest in stocks like these, do your own research. Never go on someone else's research because in the end, it's your money. It's your, it's your investment. So you need to know what you're investing in. So with Occidental Petroleum, they had uh, 21 billion revenue so it's a pretty big company um let's go back to the earnings call for the third quarter so when we go to the third quarter uh they they started presenting some of the highlights that they got 1.4 billion in free cash flow and that's something that also boosted uh occidental's uh, stock price because when the vaccine was announced it did climb around 20 30 percent but then the rest of the climb was because of their great earnings so they have also um 
uh, announced their debt that they're um, able to cover right now. So we're going to see in the third quarter they did have a loss of 84 cents in the quarter, but it was uh, not as bad as the second quarter where oil prices were pretty low. So the average oil price was uh, around $35 a barrel in this quarter. That's uh, what I can remember. And this is some of their businesses all uh, Occidental Petroleum is into. So they're into oil and gas that Oxychem and they're also in the corporate uh, field of um, oil. So they, the things I really liked about this uh, quarter was their successful debt management. So they've extended the debt uh, past to 20, 2025. So they have less short-term debt and more long-term debt. Uh, the debt for next year is not as bad as people are thinking and I'm pretty sure and confident they can pay it off so one of the things i really like about occidental petroleum is that they're able to generate a lot of free cash flow at very low oil prices i believe they can sustain even a good dividend at crude oil prices at 40 and where are the crude oil prices right now near 50. so if crude oil prices can stay close to 50 it's already really good for occidental petroleum and i i really have a hard time thinking that the company will be in trouble with oil prices near 50 dollars so we're going to be looking at some of their uh, original guidance and their current guidance. So they had guidance for 2020 before the pandemic came to have all these streams of revenue right over here. And um, obviously they had to cut down on that and it couldn't happen. So it was just around 2.4 billion. So they have the guidance of uh, the for the year. So this is some of their Permian resources, so you know they're ha they do work in New Mexico, Delaware, Delaware, and New Mexico. So mainly around these areas, and um, the, they have these many rigs and wells over there, and they just give some uh, information about those. So this is what I found really really interesting. So as you can see uh, in page fifteen of their investor presentation, their debt is quite low in the next few years. Twenty twenty two is um, a, sub a substantial amount, but then after they can cover these five years, uh, you got really less debt left. So the debt is 40 billion in long term, which is 10 years. So they're, they ha they have managed to pay a lot of uh, it uh, now. Uh, they have only this much outstanding debt uh, and debt as uh, this line means they are able to meet it debt as first quarter of 2020. So this is how much they've already paid off. So they've paid off a lot of this debt. So from here to here and here to here, uh, one point, I believe it's 1.3 billion. They did the calculation and um, they have 5 billion in credit facility that they can take from the bank at any time, fully available. And they have 1.9 billion in cash. So if they're in any trouble, they can also pay that down. Um, their current focus would be to maintain their production base, keep on making the oil, the, meet the oil demand that the country of America has and uh, reduce their debt. That's the number one goal. And the second midterm goal is to get their dividend back. I believe if they get their dividend back, the stock could climb over 50% because Occidental's Petroleum's dividend was pretty impressive unless they cut the dividend and slowly grow it. But if they bring the original dividend back, I think a lot of investors will get excited with this and they want to have growth of their capital. So they want to expand and be a bit more eye-catching, I would say. I know this industry is not that eye-catching, the whole oil industry. People want to stay away from this because they, they think electric cars are going to come here by next year and all demand is going to all go away. Well, I don't think that way and I don't think you should think that way. All companies are not bad to invest in. Obviously, for climate change purposes, uh, they can be bad. Some companies like ExxonMobil are terrible. They don't even want to do anything with climate change. Shell and BP and we've seen Occidental with their OxyChem, they're focusing on helping uh, net carbon zero uh, uh, emission goals. So that's one thing good. And for the long term, they want to do uh, buybacks of their shares and um, uh, their preferred equity. So now I think that will be it. For this video i'm just going to see if there's anything else interesting i'm going to uh, have a link for this um presentation uh, the, uh on the channel uh, description and um 
one thing they had some options uh hedging with their um like to hedge their um profits i would say and i don't really know what they did here but i know these are options they are calls puts i'm gonna have to study this a bit but i i've never done uh options trading with uh all prices so that's something i'm gonna um try learn and as we go down 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 okay so that vault performance asset overview and here's the environmental social and governance so if anyone of uh, you guys are interested in that you guys can see that then so we know that now oxid uh all prices of wti are at 47 dollars we saw back in november they even went to around 35 dollars so they have climbed uh quite substantially and they are down 20 percent for 2020 but uh i think into 2021 all demand will come back people are going to fly more in planes and i know people have bought a lot of electric cars but trust me there's still a lot of normal cars in the world and i think oil demand will still be here easily for the next 10 to 20 years so with that said and oil prices in my opinion rising more next year i think this is one industry that is currently very undervalued you've got occidental petroleum which is a bit of a risky one but then you've got stocks like chevron which have less debt and they're also trading like 10 20 percent below their let's see 30 percent below their uh previous highs so it there is an opportunity in my opinion over there shell is a great company i own as well it's currently at 14.6 dollars as you saw the vaccine came and it went up around 50 percent in in one month which is great but it's still down around 45 percent and, it, and it's a great um opportunity I, in my opinion it's mainly because investors are scared and in getting into this, in this field we know that shell did also cut their dividend and now they're trying to bring it back so that's pretty impressive but um the sector of oil is currently undervalued in my opinion and i think maybe you guys could build a small etf and have a combination of different different oil stocks so i think that's one of the key takeaways from my video today i hope you guys have a nice 2021 make sure to like this video subscribe to the channel and comment if you have any questions for me i hope i hope we have a great year ahead guys and make a lot of progress and i'll see you guys next time